He places his hand ever so gently over mine, and my heart skips a beat. How do you manage to hold everything together despite so much loss? I appreciate your concern. It is not easy. Actually, until I read your ad, I assumed I was going to live the rest of my days alone. That would have been a terrible loss for me. <laughs> Let us not get ahead of ourselves, Walter. I mean that when I saw in the newspaper someone else looking for a partner. It snapped me out of feeling so forlorn. It presented a possible new future. A new future? Who is getting ahead of themselves now? <laughs> hmm. Touché. <laughs> the truth is your letter made me feel optimistic again, too. Whatever may come of this. Mm. Look at me. I've just been yammering away. Not at all. Please, tell me about yourself. One further question regarding Catherine Wambacher's suitability to be your wife. Did it have anything to do with the fact that she had not a single living relative and was a woman of means? Her being unattached, as it were, meant family would not tie her down, and having originated from nothing myself, I do suppose her situation may have been attractive to a certain degree. Speaking of your beginnings, where were you born? To the best of my knowledge, I was born in Fort Smith, Arkansas, though I don't profess to recall the event. Tell me about your upbringing. Oh, my memory is we were so poor, we picked through the trash and stole our food. We walked to Missouri, where we took up in an abandoned home. I was beaten regularly, but at 12 years of age, I escaped. You make it sound like you were a prisoner. I knew I had perhaps done a thing or two outside the strictures my mother and stepfather imposed upon me and was no longer willing to suffer the beatings that were certain to follow. And what of your education? Oh, I never had the privilege of attending school. Once I was on my own, I found jobs slopping barns and doing the bidding for the farmers who employed me. I only began several years later to read and study at night on my own. I'm curious, Mr. Watson, to learn more about these farm jobs and the farmers. Did they cause you to travel to multiple locations? Mm, indeed. I worked in southern Missouri for different farmers. It was hard. And then I would follow the thrasher and work for just about every farmer in the country. In a sense, then, you became an itinerant worker at a relatively tender age. How much of this did you reveal to your wife? Your first course, Oysters Rockefeller. Oh, this looks delicious, thank you. You were saying... Yes, I suppose it was a privileged upbringing, the opportunity to travel as a youngster because of my father's work as a railroad executive was quite thrilling, to say the least. But what of your education? Private tutors. They were engaged by my parents so that I might be free to explore this great country and beyond. Fascinating. Especially to one like me who has never left the confines of her native state. Fascinating as it may be, it set me off on a course to become a traveling executive, a profession that busied me so I never looked up to realize what I was missing. And what, pray tell, was that? A true home and a loving wife. Indeed. Did you never plant roots in any location? My main residence is in Vancouver. However, I'm renting the home to a young family owing to the fact that I'm nearly always engaged in travel for work. Hmm. How will you ever find the time to build a relationship while you travel? In my mind, it is the quality, not the quantity of time that affords one the richest rewards in love. And I have been making plans to spend some considerable time with the woman of my dreams in Hawaii. Oh. <laughs> relax and escape this intensely busy period of my life. <laughs> and your main course? Roast duckling for the lady and Delmonico steak for the gentleman. Ah, a feast fit for a king and his queen. <laughs> I would now like you to tell us about your first marriage. I wed firstly a girl in Missouri, when I was not much more than a lad myself. What year was that? If my memory serves me correctly, it was 1903 or thereabouts. Seventeen years ago. What was the name of this girl? 
I am not able to conjure up her name just now. I find that quite difficult to believe. This is a woman you say you married. Well, I'm afraid it did not last long. Owing to the fact that uh, I had an itch to travel for new business ventures, and she was far too rooted in her hometown to be of any use to me. In any case, according to our files, your first legal marriage of record was not until June 13th, 1913, in Vancouver. Who did you marry at that time? Vancouver seems familiar. However, I cannot attest to the name of the woman. I see. Perhaps we should shift topics. What is it you do for a living? I own shares in a few companies, including an oil company, and I have been working to expand the business down here in Signal Hill. <laughs> Please, Walter, tell me more about your work. Everything you read in my ad is true. But there is more. Oh? Can you keep a secret? 